Welcome back, Troglodytes, to your daily dose of guitar information, the Trogly's Guitar Show. What guitar are we checking out today? Another one from Reverend, that's right. Reverend has purchased the channels. It's Reverend Guitars every day, all day. Nah, just kidding. There just happens to be a whole bunch of new guitar day orders for Reverend's new models here. And I'm happy to check these things out because the first one, I wasn't a big fan, but I said I would try another one eventually. And I ended up really liking the Billy Corgan. So now we've got one from Reeves Gabrels, which for me personally, it was not a name I had heard of before. But then once I started to research the guy, it's like, oh, okay. So let me fill you in real quick while we get this unboxed. Two words, David Bowie. That's right, he worked with him from 1987 through 1999, but he's also been a member of the band The Cure. You know, like hit songs Friday, I'm in love, just like heaven, love song. If those don't ring a bell, just look him up on YouTube. You've heard him before. Now that's one of his more recent endeavors. He's been with them since 2012, but he also rocks out with Tin Machine and his own band Reeves Gabrels and his imaginary friends. So now that we've got that all cleared up, here it is. It's his new signature. And the main thing that had me excited for this one is it's actually a satin finish. All manufacturers kind of have a different take on what a gloss finish feels and what a satin finish feels like. So I was really interested in, you know, taking this one for a ride. So far, I can say this is a very nice, almost semi-gloss, like it's just really buffed down. So far, I'm liking it, but I haven't handled it too much. But it's that same way on the neck as to the body. The only downside is this new model has this flame maple veneer top and the satin finish does absolutely nothing for this thing moving. This is looking like a photo flame veneer to me. I don't think it's actually a real wooden veneer, but I could be wrong on that. It's just I'm not getting any movement on this. <laughs> That's not necessarily a bad thing. It's just if you were expecting it to move, know that it will not. But this is a very sleek new iteration of his signature guitars. That's all right. I said signature guitars. This guy has had a bunch of them with Reverend. Let's check them out. So as far as I can tell, there's about five Reeves Gabrels signature guitars. Let's start with the coolest name ever, the Dirt Bike. It's a one pickup humbucker, kind of a slightly offset SG-esque body shape. That looks really cool. But then there's also a 2P90 Raptail version called the Royale. That would be one I would be interested in checking out. That thing's pretty cool. Then there was a version called the Space Hawk. That is a big looking guitar. It's kind of got that weird segmented pick guards like we were talking about in the previous Billy Corgan signature signature episode. And then he also has the RG Sus. Not Sus as in Suspicious, Sus as in Sustainiac pickup. Yeah, if you need one of those, you can check out that Reverend signature. And then it's the one we're talking about today, which I believe is his newest model. I could be wrong on that though. It's basically a flame top version of that without the Sustainiac pickup. So if you're in the market for kind of a weird looking SG guitar or like a flattened, weird, rounded out telly, these are kind of the guitars for you. And I say flattened out weird telly in a very loving manner because th that's the shape that it reminds me most of and I think it's mainly because of the pick guard design here and obviously our control plate is very similar to that as well but this is not a string through vibe guitar with the tele bridge this is a Wilkinson trem system so I've had good luck with the Wilkinson trems in the past we've got the uh, base contour control like we've been having on the other ones we'll talk about that on the workbench and a few other fun push pull things here that has to do with phase polarity so even though we only got two pickups it looks like we're gonna have a lot of different tones and we've got some more blinging specs on these things but how much are these things brand new they are somewhere between 1200 and 1300 i say that because right now on sweetwater's website this exact guitar is 1199 dollars and they do not come with cases at that price either you have to buy those separately they're about 200 to 250 bucks there's a satin midnight black now the other color that's also offered over here, it's a really cool rockin' orange, but that one's $100 more expensive for some reason. I don't know, maybe that's a new pricing update or rockin' orange just really commands a special price. But if you're wanting something a little bit more subtle, like this new Guitar Day purchaser, this is a really nice looking one. And I'm digging that ebony fretboard so far and I like the uh, kind of more yellowed inlays. But to learn more about Mr. Gabrell's signature guitar here, let's go ahead and throw it on the workbench, take an individual look at its parts and specs, and get to that playing demo. Inside Gabrell's signature guitar here. So in case you don't like the specs of this one, it appears these might be called the Charger, or at least there's other ones that have a similar body shape within their lineup of guitars. But let's go ahead and check the specs out of this one. 
So first off, these pickups are called rail hammers, and I believe that's like a, their own type of pickup that they have in there, because it's also like part of their website. So what's unique about that is you've got three pull pieces and then a rail style. So it's like the blending of two common pickup types. But this is his own signature set of rail hammers. They just call it the Reeves Gabrell's signature pickups, as you can see with his signature on the outside of these like nickel parts. And now underneath our pick guard, we can take a look at the neck pickup. It looks about the same, but look at this giant swimming pool route, just like we saw in the last Corgan signature. And you've also got some writing in there to identify the model. So that means you could Nashville Telly this thing if you really wanted to or add another pickup. But a feature I really like about this pick guard is it's actually slightly aged. So you have a black, more of a yellowish white black layer on this thing. And that might not seem like much, but the binding itself is stark white in all the locations. So it adds a little bit of contrast and blends in with these more yellowed over inlays for the neck. It looks pretty good with these pickups as well. But true to most Reverend guitars made in the current day, these use Carina bodies. But interestingly enough, on Reverend's own spec sheets, I couldn't find anything of what the top wood was made out of here. So I think that just confirms that this is a photo of Flame Maple. Because we can verify that right here as well. You can see all the Carina bodies. So that's just some sort of like a photo flame. Because I didn't have any luck of ever getting that stuff to move even outside in natural sunlight. Our pickups within the circuit read 8.06 in the neck. Bridge position about twice as hot, 16.18. And the middle just for fun, 5.44. The output jack is one of those two-stage ones, so I'm wondering if that's actually a stereo jack. So now let's talk controls. This time our base contour is right here. So what this does is if you think the neck pickup is too muddy, you can roll that down a little bit and within the circuit, it's just taking all the base frequencies out. So in typical humbucker fashion, if you have it all the way on, it's gonna be regular. But if you cut that out, it almost gets single coil like, but it's not exactly the same as a coil split. This is great if you're recording and you just wanna get something, you know, somewhere in between, or if it's too bass heavy, you can just dial it down a little bit. This is a very nice feature. I've been coming to appreciate. It's not so much fun to demo all the different tones of these things, but generally you're going to like set it and forget it once you find what you like with these pickups. But then down here, this is our master volume, and then this is a master tone, but this knob can be pulled up to be at a phase if you're in the middle position only. So right here, so that gives you those quacky Peter Green tones. Nice to have, but will you use it a whole bunch? Yeah, I mean, I guess it depends on your style. And yeah, regular three-way toggle switch. But it looks like all the pots are made in Korea, including our switch. That is very tightly wired in there, but it looks pretty neat. Here you can see the quality of the route in the body and the paint job. Looks like the factory made a small goof right there, had to fill that in and then redrill it. Thankfully, that's covered over by the plate though. And then lastly, we've got our Wilkinson Trem system, the WV550 11K model. Wilkinson Trems are pretty cool. I mean, they're very fluid in their movement, I guess you could say. There's just two posts right here, then you adjust your intonation there, and then the back just kind of looks like a regular Stratocaster style trim. So moving on from our Karina body, we can move over to our roasted maple neck with an ebony fretboard. Now this fretboard's a little bit strange to me. It almost feels like they finished over it with a satin finish but I'm not entirely sure that they did. <laughs> I can not say for 100% certainty that these inlays they have here, they're very plasticky feeling. So it almost feels like they have a finish over top of it, but there is a difference in feel. So I think this is just a highly sanded down and like polished up ebony fretboard. It actually feels quite nice. It's not very raw and woody feeling. However, there are a few small dings along pretty much every single fret along the binding edge. That's probably due to their whole fretting process. So tooling marks, if you will, they're pretty minor, but they are there, worth pointing out. But we've got 22 frets on this one with a 12 inch fretboard radius. We're rocking the Fender 25 and a half inch scale length with a bonite nut that measures 1.69 inches. That increases to 2.04 by the 12th. We have a first fret neck depth of 0.88, and that chunks up to 0.98 by the 12th. Here's what that looks like at the first fret and the 12th fret. Reverend calls it a medium C-shaped neck, and I fully agree with that. It's got a nice little bit of chunk to it, but not overly big. But this headstock, 
man, Reverend, just paint all of them. This looks so much better than the natural ones, in my opinion. And I think it's because of this whole truss rod cavity. Like in person, when you're not in the big lights, you can't even see that route channel right there for the truss rod. And it just all kind of blends in. Even the string tree just kind of blends in with that whole pitch black head stock. And last time Billy's model had like some gunk under the finish and it made the Reverend logo look bad. But this one, they actually gloss the headstock. You get the white logo, it pops. It all looks so good on this, especially with the chrome. So that's one of my favorite features on this guy. Now here's an interesting touch. You see how the binding actually goes up right to the edge right here where they cut it off? It's very jazz master in style. This is kind of a nitpicky thing. I feel like the nut slots were a little bit too wide on this one. And you can tell it needs a couple more files on this side to look perfect. Now we move on to the back side. Just like all the other reverends we've been looking at, their calling card is the six screw neck. And this one also has a little bit of a comfort carve to it. I would say it's slightly more extreme than the other ones, but by no means a crazy cut. Then we also get the belly cuts over here, which normally I don't like belly cut tellies that have arm contours, but this one is different enough that it's cool. And that's what's great. I mean, Reverend, if they really wanted to, they could make Telecaster body shapes because Fender can't protect those. It could be a one-to-one -one replica, but they chose to make their own. So I give it credit for that. But we do have a route right here for our base contour knob made in Korea pot. And then we've got the Vera Claw back here our tremolo system. Output jack is located on the side, has the Reverend stripes, and we've got some strap buttons. But here's where I point out some more QC issues. So there is a little bit of trash in the finish right here. Maybe it's a bubbled area of the finish or a little bit of like dust or something was underneath it. There's another area of that right here. Now what's bad about that is if it catches on something, it could potentially flake the finish. And then I noticed something else on the top. Look at the top right here. Doesn't it look a little bit off as compared to over here? You have this nice white solid border around everything and then it almost disappears. It's because the finish didn't get scraped properly. You can actually see the white binding right here. It got covered over. So the factory needed to do a little bit more scraping to expose all of the binding on this particular example. It's very obvious right there. Now, thankfully, we don't have any bumpy finish on the neck or anything like that. This is a nice satin finish. I'm not quite sure what this is. Maybe it's a knot in the wood. I know it looks like dirt or grime, but it's under the finish. But I do like that we have a little bit of flame maple figuring within this neck. It's very subtle, but it's there, and you get all the nice other wood grain in this one as well. And on the back of the headstock, you can see that where it was made, Mer Music in Korea, the serial number that was put on it at the Toledo, Ohio factory, and Mr. Gabrell's signature decal here with our pin lock tuners. All said and done here, it weighs eight pounds, three ounces. Let's go ahead, plug it in, and hear how this one sounds. <laughs> run through the tones of this. Just a quick recap, bass control is up here. I'm gonna fully demo it on 10 for this, but I've personally found these are really kind of bassy pickups. So I've really been liking like the seven-ish setting on this, but we'll run through it all. But we've got our master volume right here, master tone, and our out of phase for our middle position. So full on 10 neck pickup. <laughs> Nice, glassy, and spanky is the best way to put that. Well, that's all the way at 10. Now we'll just completely take the bass out of that. It just 
just makes it like extra glassy in that sense, but I really like the base on the neck pickup. I don't think you have to worry too much about that. That's just the epitome of good neck tone. Let's try it somewhere in between. stealing the show so far. Let's try the bridge pickup. That is really biting and attacking. I mean, I've got my Marshall Blues Breaker with me today. This is overdriving that amp ridiculously. So I'm gonna roll that down to about a five or so. Now we get our clean tones back, but you can also roll down your bass contour. It doesn't quite push your amp as much. I think that's where I prefer that one, but you can also go in between. Let's try that middle position out. get the idea of the cleans. So now let's explore some dirty tones. <laughs> comes to dirt on the bridge, I kind of like it full on because when you take the bass out of that, it sounds okay for stuff like that, but when you need like a nice rhythm sound, you need a little bit more of that bass. Try the neck. Nice and thick. This is 
one somewhere somewhere in between sounds best. And lastly, our middle. Now that we know all about Reeves' new guitar here, what are my final thoughts on this thing as like a signature guitar as well as a reverend? Okay, so first off, this body shape did absolutely nothing for me in photos. Again, it's just kind of a weird mashed up Telecaster with new proportions. But the best way to put it into like Fender player terms is whenever you have a bound top Tele and they do this whole comfort carve or even when it's not even bound, it feels very similar to that. I will say I didn't really like sitting down with this guitar as much as I did standing up. This is very streamlined for that. You've got a nice, very subtle contour carve right here, but yet it's still nice and fancy. But at least for me, the comfort carve on the back also lines up just perfectly for where it needs to be. It sits very well and balanced on a strap. And I already told you how I preferred the pickups in here. I mean, super hot bridge, very, very nice neck pickup. That's what you want for some cool jazzy stuff or just really piercingly clean, but you can also shape it with your tone knob here. I could see how some people might not like this right here because it's a knob, but I'm used to less Paul. So I'm used to having a toggle switch right here, but it's far enough up here. I don't think it's really gonna cause most people issues unless you like to strum crazy like this. The trim system on it, I didn't really use it too much, but I did have to stop and retune this guitar quite often. It was always small tweaks. I'm sure a proper setup might help with that. But this ebony fretboard, it felt good to me. It's not dried out like some of the other ones that might have been. And the headstock on this one, that black really helps make the Reverend part stand out. And maybe it's just because, you know, this is my third Reverend. I'm, I'm starting to get used to the headstock, but this just looks a little bit more traditional. Kind of reminds me of like the Tom Morello Stratocaster up here. But in playing this, I noticed the satin finish on the back of this one got a little bit sticky. So I had to wipe that off as I was playing. So. That might be something you just have to like take a light sandpapering to and just like wear that down a little bit more. The whole satin finish on this does feel much nicer in my opinion as compared to the other Reverend gloss finishes. It might not look as pretty as far as, you know, reflecting lights and, you know, being shiny and whatnot, but if you're looking for a playable like gigging guitar, I think you would actually end up preferring this. But I do like that they have it on the headstock here. So where would I rank this one in terms of Reverend guitars that I've reviewed, I would say this is the best one that I featured yet. It ranks just a little bit above the Billy Corgan signature, but I think that helps that I really like Telecasters in general. So once I, you know, put two and two together, it just kind of made sense that this was a, a modern take on a telly, I guess you could say. So I hope your troglodytes enjoyed checking out this Reverend guitar with me today. If you're interested in buying a Reverend or any brand for that matter, you want it reviewed on the show first, you can check out the new Guitar Day program on my website. Thanks for watching today. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe, and we will catch you tomorrow on the next one. Take care.